I'm not going to start with Kara's rumors. Uh, let's keep the suspense up for now. Uh, I just want to, you know, maybe set the stage first by understanding why you went to Microsoft and what you think you can accomplish there that you didn't accomplish while you were at Yahoo. You know, how are you thinking about search? What are you going to do to change the game? And uh, you know, what's you know what's on your mind there? Well, thank you, Tim, for that question. So uh, let me elaborate that this answer may take a little time, but I think helps set the context context for some of the other things uh, that we're going to talk about today. Um, I left Yahoo. Uh, the reason was simple: uh, was been there for more than ten years. For like 10 years is a long time. So I always told Jerry, after 10 years, I'm going to try something else. So I left last year, August. Then uh, goofed around for a while. And then the opportunity of uh, taking this position to uh, work at the Microsoft responsible for the online services division, which includes our search business, our online portal business, and our advertising uh, platform businesses. There's three main businesses mm -hmm. in the division. Uh, the main reason I took that is uh, the opportunity to have larger and enduring impact. That has been my uh, career motivations, uh, primary drivers for me to assess opportunities. Uh, that's the primary reason. Specifically to your point about how we think about search, what's the future directions, particularly we launched the Bing uh, over five months ago, seeing some good tractions where the future is ahead. So before I talk about those, um, let me just uh, share our worldviews because how we think about search. Because those worldviews informs our strategic thinkings and guide our future directions. To start with, uh, we think search holistically. Uh, we believe search, in a broader sense, is about computationally understand user intent. And for fulfill user intent, use a variety of online digital information resources. User intent in this case means the purpose of the users trying to accomplish, their interests, their needs, the tasks they have in mind. To in using a, let's say, oversimplify what we're saying is if you have a high dimension space of all the interests, another high dimension space of all the possible needs, a simple model of user intent is a proper distribution of the possible intent the user have. Search, today's form of search, when you see a query box and type in keywords, is just a one specific instance of understanding, capture user intent, and the fulfill user intent. In today's form, a query gives you three pieces of specific information. One is it's explicit. Nobody forces anybody to type anything. There's explicit expression of user intent. The second is often very specific. And third, it's immediate. T typical to be immediate. When you see a query that cheap running shoes, and this person is looking for shoes and the running shoes, very specific. Yeah. And also, also have a preference on low end. So you know how to serve that user, particularly when it's commercial intent. But all these things can vary. Intent can be implicit, and it can be less specific, can be more general. And intent can be latent or can be recurring. You, sometimes you have a standing interest of certain things. So therefore, the form of capturing and understanding computational, understanding user intent, and build very compelling services to fulfill those intent can vary. Today's form of a search, when you have a box type in, it's just the one specific instance. So to, to capture more intent, though, you also need to capture more context. So yeah. for example, I'm uh, a programmer, and I'm coding, and I go to my uh, search engine, the fact that I've just been in this programming context might tell you something about my intent Absolutely. or might not. If I'm out a uh, consumer walking down the street and I search for restaurants, it's more likely I'm looking for something near where I am, you know where. The, so are you gathering new forms of, of data to feed let that intent engine? Let me address that. I think that's a great yeah. question. So let me maybe just, what you asked is an absolute great question, but this is just one of the many dimensions that we systematically think about how we pursue that long-term aspiration of really lift, lift the level of our ability to understand the user intent. OK, I understand. A, so yeah. your, your point is that your overall goal and your framing uh, strategy is you're going to get better than anybody else at understanding what the user wants from all the signals they're giving you. Absolutely. That's yeah. our long-term aspiration, yeah. 
it's going to take a long-term quest of building technologies. In very simple terms, what amounts to is you try to build a mind reader, understand yeah. people, mm -hmm. right? So there's historically, let's take that as perspective. This is how we holistically think about search. Yeah. And let's take a historical perspective first. Then you can extrapolate what's possible ahead. Yeah. So, so if you look at way back on search, initially when the whole thing started, you have a bunch of websites, hypertext linking to each other. In the early days of search, there's a lot of what we call the navigational intent. Yeah. You still see a large number of queries mm -hmm. of navigational intent. People a priori, before they go to a search engine, they're looking for a site. They just do yeah. not remember the URLs. Yeah. So how do we solve that problem? And companies such as Google, and at the time I was at the IBM Research Lab, you analyze the, the web link structures, yeah. look at the anchor text, and then you pretty much solve that problem. For today's search experience, if you're looking for sites, by and large, the search engine nails it. You, you can find the sites. So you think there's a lot of opportunity still, and you know, clearly you have, uh, you, you, with Bing, you got some good momentum uh, coming out of the blocks. Absolutely. Uh, you're not done, obviously, so what's next? Yeah, so let me, let me before I talk about next, paint the picture, then we'll talk about next thing. Okay. So if you look at the history, because I think the history is important, okay. and then you can easier, I think, Tim, to look at the future. A few years later, there's a lot of people talk about commercial intent. Mm -hmm. Guess what? There's a company called Overture, figure out a way to say it's in order to fulfill commercial intent, people are looking for things to buy. There's a better way to do it instead of crawling and indexing the web pages. Why don't we build about a marketplace, let people bid against those commercial intent? The reason I say this is there's a different way of understanding user intent. Once you have understanding of user intent, you can figure out solutions. The web, there are several key drivers for that. First is the web becomes richer and richer. Today, we have a lot of large library repository of imageries, sites like Flickr's. Yeah. And there's many, many queries, many, many intents. It's far better off we use images to fulfill those intents. Mm -hmm. Then you have YouTubes of the world. There's lots and lots of videos. I still remember a query a few years back, uh, the bridge collapsed in Minneapolis. Query spiked. It turns out there's a surveillance camera videos. Mm -hmm. You can read the news articles, blog pages about that thing. There's nothing better than see that videos. So we just need to build more technologies to tap into the richness of the web repository to fulfill user intent better. What's coming ahead, you have things like Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. particularly Twitter. It's a really a emerging communication platform. There's just a lot of growth and the dominant usage pattern, the sailing features are still evolving in many ways. But in its early stage, you can see there's vibrancy. There's a strong velocity of things flowing through. It will enable people to find out information, answer those intents so, so, than ever before. Yeah, absolutely. So, so there's a lot of excitement about yep. uh, uh, Twitter and Facebook. Any truth to the rumors that you've done some kind of deal to so integrate? How about <laughs> let's just uh, answer that question. To do that properly, uh, let us invite uh, a guest speaker. Okay. Uh, <laughs> our senior <laughs> vice president of Yusuf Mehdi, come on stage. He's going to do a demo and okay. then answer your question. How's that? <laughs> All, All right. right. Okay. Let's welcome Yusuf. So it looks like Carl was right. <laughs> well, good morning. Um, Chi had asked me to do a little bit of an update on Bing. So I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, what is in the next wave of Bing, which we're in the middle of rolling out. Now, um, Bing we launched about 100 days ago. It's gotten off to a pretty decent start. Part of it, uh, as Chi was describing, is because we do a good job on basic search problems, hard search problems of how you get to a particular website. But part of the success has been that we've been able to get out in front where search is headed. Uh, and so if today's search is, how do I get to the UPS side or the FedEx side, what we think happens uh, tomorrow is you start to ask more complicated questions, like what would be the best digital camera to buy my daughter and get the answer? Or where does President Obama stand on the health care issue and be able to get the answer? And to do that, you have to do more visual uh, things. You have to do more sophisticated things in the user experience. You have to have better access to data. Uh, and so I want to show you a little bit uh, of what is coming, some things that have just come out and some things that are about to come out in the next wave of Bing, which I affectionately sort of call Bing Wave 2. So I'll come and take a look. This is our home page here. One of the things that has really connected with Bing is right off the bat, it's been very hot with kids in elementary schools. Many of them now are starting to use Bing and change their home page just because of the visual way in which you can come and discover. This is a picture, picture of the Guggenheim Museum. 
And then I want to show you a couple of examples of things that we've done. So one feature of Bing Wave 2 is visual search, which we've just released about a month ago. And what it does is it lets you effectively explore information in a much more sophisticated way. So here, for example, are 1,500 popular cameras that we have in the index. And I can kind of scroll through. And imagine there is a, a query. So like I'm, I, my daughter says, hey, Dad, can you get me that little pink phone, you know, about five megapixels, uh, eight megapixels, costs a couple hundred bucks. There it is. The visual eye can easily search and find that product much faster than trying to sift through links. Imagine trying to formulate that query. Uh, another example, because a lot of people in this room are more power users, imagine you say, okay, I know the camera I want. So think about trying to create this search query. I want a camera that is 10 megapixels. I'll slide the slider here. And I want optical zoom of over 10 times. Okay, and up comes the set of cameras that fit that criteria. And then if we had more time, I'd go in and show you how you can go in and get all the information about that product. You can get reviews, you can get prices with one click. It changes the way you do search. You don't need to go and crawl links. We pull that data to you. Uh, another example of that uh, will be uh, here even top iPhone apps. Uh, I figure I will come in and show you. Here's 500 of the top iPhone apps. If you ever try and find that on the iPhone, it's pretty hard. You can just scroll right through. You can say, for example, show me the top 25 free, and we'll share the free ones. Or you can come in and say, let's see the ones that you know, cost money. And if I wanted, I can come in and pick some that cost money and sort that way. So a vastly different way to search and find information. And that's been one big thing that's really resonated with consumers. Now, uh, the second thing I want to talk about, about uh, Bing Wave 2, which we're announcing today and has been apparently much talked about, is the uh, emerging hot area of real-time information. That is a whole other source and corpus of information. Uh, today, no one can get access to that inside the search engine. You can't do any of the great stuff that we showed you here visually. And there's a lot of work that can be done. So today, we are basically making two announcements uh, in terms of partnerships that we have done. And we are uh, going live with a beta uh, of an offering uh, that will be live uh, shortly after this presentation, if all goes well. Uh, the first partnership uh, is a strategic partnership with Twitter. Uh, this is a big deal that we've been working on for a long time. And effectively, the, the announcement is that we are going to get access to all of the public uh, Twitter information in real time. Uh, and we're going to collaborate between the between the two teams, uh, folks there, Evan Williams and Dick Costello, have been fantastic partners already up to this point and going forward. And we're going to do some really exciting things, which I'm going to show you. The other partnership we've done is with Facebook to get uh, access to all of the public, um, effectively, information data posts. And, and products will come with that offering at a later date. But I really want to focus on Twitter. That is the, the big uh, partnership that we've done. They're really the, the leaders and movers out there right now in this particular area. And we've done a lot of collaboration with them that I want to go ahead and show you. Let me start first with something that we actually launched right after Bing phase one, which is a search results page here. Now, this is, again, let's talk about the first consumer need, which is that you're looking up for celebrity information. And you want to find, uh, I don't know, concert tour dates, or you want to find a little bit about the celebrity. One of the things that we did with Twitter, they were a leader even back in the summer, and they allowed us to have a access to this feed. You can see here, I can actually see the tweets from John Legend, personal favorite of mine, a great singer. And you can see he's in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, late night. And you start to get a feel for what about that celebrity more than you would have had if it was just the web crawl. So here we're bringing the best of real time right into the web results. The second thing we had done recently, which I won't show you, is a partner collaboration with Bing Tweets. And in fact, we did a lot with uh, Mr. Battelle's Federated Media on that effort to bring together the best of search and tweets. Again, Twitter was a great partner. And now I want to set up the, the, the next phase, which we are uh, launching today. And that is around what if you could get access to the full data feed uh, from Twitter, and then I'll start to apply some relevancy ranking and some real-time efforts. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here is now the full uh, set of tweets in real time from Twitter, completely the full feed, natively in the Bing experience. And I can come in, and you can start to see real-time tweets that should roll in and refresh live. In fact, anyone here who's got uh, a tweet-capable phone, uh, just hash W2S, and your tweets will show up. But now, what I'm showing you here is the most recent tweets. But a lot of times what happens is, as a user, uh, what you care about is you want to know about the topic. So you don't want to show up late to a breaking story. So for example, here at Web2, let's say you're showing up late 
Uh, and you say, well, I don't really want to know just what's happening now. I want to know what's happening about the topic in general. So we have a feature here called Best Match, which we use in search, where we apply a bunch of our search techniques and relevancy to improve uh, the results. And what we do here is we do a bunch of uh, interesting things. First thing we do is we do a lot of deduping. So you know a lot of times, you've, if for those of you who use Twitter, you see the same tweet over and over. We collapse those and just give you the, the popular ones. And then we basically focus on three things. We focus on uh, basically uh, quality of the results. So we look at the people who are tweeting and we assign effectively a, a social relevance score. So there are different ways you do it, but the number of people who follow um, you versus you follow, maybe let's say it would be one uh, method. Second thing we'll do is we'll look at the caption. So a lot of times if someone types in life sucks, uh, that may be interesting, but it's not that valuable. If someone instead has a much more longer comment that has some insight, maybe has a link to a, a story from a popular news source, we'll assign that another level of uh, quality and relevance. And then if, uh, if a particular tweet is being retweeted multiple times, then you know that's pretty hot because people are talking about it. So effectively quality, popularity, and usefulness we bake in. Then we do spam filtration. Uh, you know, we, we ferret out all the adult things that shouldn't be in there. And what you get now is you get very nice results uh, in that particular area. And so, uh, so th there it is. And you can see here now people are tweeting uh, in real time on, on, on uh, this offering. Now the next phase I want to talk to you about is, OK, great. So you're able to really now start to improve the ability to search the Twitter stream. You want to go to the next level. We have a couple offerings. Here what we have is the hottest topics on Twitter. And this is effectively the tag cloud. And so just like most clouds that you see, you're able to see what's really popular and moving. So for example, you can see the movie Paranormal, uh, Windows 7. In fact, Twitter, Microsoft, there's a lot of people tweeting about that apparently from rumors and that's starting to make the Twitter cloud. And of course, sports teams because it's Major League Baseball. And what you can see is you can pick any one of these and dive in. Or the next thing we do is we're able to then go in and take a look at the links and actually pull up the most popular embedded links. So as, you're, so as you know, a lot of times what happens is people's comments are only so useful. A lot of times people are commenting about popular stories. So here we take a look at Michael Jackson. And what you can see is this is a story that is, uh, people are talking about. Or Magic Mouse, people are talking about things that are happening on the, an app for Apple. Or of course, information about the game or Windows 7 launches. So we take the most popular links. And again, we do a relevancy um, you know, assignation to the links. And we can tell what's buzzy, what's trending up and down. And those make it onto the page. So a very powerful way, again, to say, hey, tell me about what the links are that are being shared out there in the Twitter sphere. And how do I bring those up? And finally, I want to show you, uh, we'll pick a particular topic like the Yankees, let's say. Uh, I take no particular position on baseball because I'm a Mariners fan. But uh, we come in here and we'll see Yankees and you'll see the most recent tweets. And then below that, I'll see the actual links that are being shared on the topic of the Yankees. So I can come in and see, for example, here is, um, here's a, a, a story about Pedro. Here's a story about what's going on for the, with the Angels fans. Uh, there's a little bit about other teams. And I can come in and see all of the actual stories related to this topic. So, um, and the final thing that I, I didn't show you up front, but go ahead and take a look. See all the bit.ly URLs. How often have you seen a bit.ly URL and you wonder, well, where am I going to go if I click on that? Now what we do is we pull out the domain and we show you the domain of where that is going to land. Right? So very cool way, again. Yeah, go ahead. You can let it out. Feels good. Uh, so thank you very much. So the, basically, that is, that is a quick peek. Uh, that's all we have time for. Uh, what you see now is this is um, the uh, beta code. Our developers who've worked very hard on this, Sean Sukter, is back in our California campus with the Ouija board making sure this thing is up and live. And Paul Yu is actually in the audience. And so as soon as we're done, he's going to call up and turn it on. And within a few minutes, you should be able to actually use it. And within an hour, it should be fully up and running. Again, knock on wood, all things going well. And the way to get to it is you go to bing.com slash Twitter. That's the only way to actually find it. Uh, and you can go and check that out. So we're very excited, very happy with the partnership with Twitter. Uh, thanks very much to all their engineers who helped us. Uh, thanks very much. Thank thanks you. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Thank you. So Tim, let me just step back to say we're super happy uh, with the partnership with Twitter as the first major search engine to do that kind of partnership. But that's just the one of the many steps. The key thing is there's several things I want to just emphasize. What you see on the outside is backed about things you don't see. One is to have a compelling mission 
aspiration long-term vision that guides our strategies. The second is to build powerful technological infrastructures. We have long ways to go, but we're making good progress. You need to have powerful, powerful computer infrastructures so that you can build the models to understand user intent, process all the content, particularly things like real-time content. And third is building the talent bases. Ultimately, it's how good the talent the teams are. So we're making good progress of continuing to hire more talented individuals to join the Bing teams. But so still, this is an long appeal. You want more go. people. Well, this is <laughs> this is absolutely the right place to tell our vision, tell our story, because we believe no, there's so much opportunity for innovation. Yeah. The key is to build great technology, great teams, yeah. and accelerate the pace of innovation. I, I want to get to audience Q and A real quickly, but I first we just want to ask you yeah. a couple of questions uh, first about this. Uh, Financial terms. I mean, is this a windfall for Twitter? Is this going to keep them? Uh, you know, is this their business model, or so we do not disclose any financial terms for? You know, financial. I had to ask. Uh, yes, is, you have is, to ask. Yeah. Is, is it? Is it? Uh, um, what's the length of time on the deal? So I don't actually do not know the specific terms. The key is this is a start. We believe mm -hmm. there's more okay. opportunities between us and Twitter and other parties to yeah. work on win-win partnership like this. Okay, I, I want to ask just uh, one more question, yeah. and that is, uh, as you, uh, if your goal really is to build a mind reader, you're going to have to know a lot more about us. Um, how do you think about the privacy concerns that yeah, are so in, Great question. There? So yeah. let me just say a couple of things. One is, absolute privacy is one very important problems or issues, shouldn't say a problem, issue we have to carefully deal with for our industry as a whole. There's a few fundamental principles we should all adhere to. One is full disclosure, full transparency. To everything we do when we collect the data, we have to tell our users this is the data we collect for what purposes. Ultimately, give the control to our users. And more importantly, the purpose of having the data, build the model, is to in a way that provide real useful values to our users. So we're going to be able to sort of query and say, what data do you have about me? Well, let me just come back to what your question. The, the beauty, I would say, is that you can actually model user intent uh, by looking at the web corpus. The, if you're in, doing search for, you know, the, for a fully developed economy like the US, the, the, the US English web corpus just have a lot of vibrancy, vitality. There's so much richness captured. So how do we know this person's commercial intent, this person's navigation intent? I don't need to plug something in your head. You just look at what's in that corpus. Mm -hmm. And you can have a decent distribution of signals to say, what's the probabilistic distribution of possible meanings or possible purposes if user give you that query? Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a variety so of yeah, techniques, I, I, yeah. but the key thing is uh, come back to have great teams, have great technology infrastructures, and keep the pace of innovation. So we should open to uh, uh, audience questions before we run out of time. So uh, if people have questions, uh, come to the mics. Over there. Hi, Jeremiah Al Yang. Uh, will this real-time Twitter feed actually influence the search results in the existing Bing results? That's a great question. So I would say a couple of things. One is, this is just the beginning. There's a couple of things I would just uh, comment on. It's more of a directional versus specific things that we do today. One is, a real-time corpus like Twitter, there's a lot of important velocity signals features. Uh, particularly when things are trending up, you can get very good signals from that corpus. You can use that signal for a variety of purposes. That's number one. The second is the Twitter corpus as of today, as I, my view on this is the dominant pattern of uh, publishing consumption of that corpus is still ev evolving, emerging. Uh, but based on what we see today, you have enough signals for you to work with because it's also repository of original content, or they're short text segments, but they can be meaningful content. A lot of it is meta content. They essentially refer to other, top, other content that are living on the other part of the web. So you can use those to augment the today's search experience. But that's, in my view, just at the beginning, because uh, the futures can be very, very compelling. For example, I use Twitter, uh, not a heavy user, but just to look at certain different things. Uh, my daughter goes to Saratoga High Schools. There's people in Saratoga High who tweet about 
sporting events when there is a concert performing. So if I would like to follow or figure out what's happening in Saratoga High, I now can find it in a major search engine. That's just one of the many examples what can be enabled for new emerging platforms such as Twitter, because anytime you fundamentally lower the cost, lower the barrier for producing and consuming information, it just opens up opportunities. Yeah. So the beauty of that data, Tim, is yeah. most of it is public and has diversities. Yeah. Anytime you see public data has vibrancy diversities, that's where search comes in, because yeah. search can unlock a lot of values. So um, before we go to the next uh, question here, yeah. uh, are you keeping the Twitter stream? You know, I mean, one of the problems with Twitter these days is that the, the length of the archive is getting shorter and shorter. Uh, as part of this deal, does, uh, is Microsoft archiving the, the, the fire hose? This is the, the fresh of the, the, this is just done. So uh, I probably would not answer that specific question because I want to be accurate. Okay. I'm not aware of the latest of the specific right. details. Over here. Uh, Bob Peck, Barron Capital. In trying to build the mind reader that you're trying to build, as much context is as important as, um, possibly be. So therefore, with your deal with Yahoo, could you talk a little about the data sharing that will take place both ways, two ways between you and Yahoo? And then just lastly, on Twitter, is it a non-exclusive deal? The last, uh, answer to the second question first, the, the Twitter deal is, is non-exclusive. Um, with regard to the Yahoo deal, in terms of data sharing, the company worked toge together, and we uh, have a set of core principle, and one of them is full protection of our term of services to our users, so there's complete commitment on privacy protections in how the two companies work together in the, the Microsoft Yahoo partnership. With regard to contest, the, the emerging paradigm is particularly for device such, devices such as your smartphones. There's a lot of contest in some ways innate rather than in that device, right? For example, in your smartphones, at least we know the who, when, where, what. It's got a phone number, knows who, who you are knows the, the timestamp, it's morning or the evenings, a lot of time knows where, and that the what information is also captured to a large extent, because in my smartphone, you should know I'm at the Web 2.0 conference, talking right, to Tim still, and we, all those. No, I understand, we still haven't really gotten to the meat of this question, which yeah. is, uh, you know, what's the value of the data that you're getting you know, from Yahoo in terms of shaping this mind reader? Is there a significant uh, you know, advantage there? So the, the the, some of the important value of the Yahoo partnership is really the scale of the search, mm -hmm. what I call operating footprint, the amount of query to, you work with. Because the, the guts of the search product R&D is very much data driven. And mm -hmm. you have to a lot of algorithms, data models, you have to do experiments. When you have a larger operating footprint, it enables you to run more experiments, test more hypotheses. So ultimately, whoever can test more hypotheses, they put more changes, you will have a deeper product pipeline. So the Yahoo deal, in many ways, profoundly enabled the partnership between Microsoft and Yahoo together. We can accelerate the pace of innovation. It's, it's that piece of value is extremely important for a 10-year deal like that. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'm afraid we're out of time. Uh, having the, the demo made it a little tough to have as much conversation as we'd otherwise like. But, but that was important. But I, but I think it was very important. And it was I a great demo. Everybody yeah. is delighted to. Uh, Give us a try. Go to Bing slash Twitter. <laughs> hey, thank thanks you. a lot, Thank Steve. you very much. All right, thank yeah. you very much.